Russia just announced plans for a game-changing upgrade to its flagship airliner, a shortened MC-21 with longer range. Yes, you heard that right. Fewer seats, more miles. Could this be the spark that reignites Russia's aviation dreams? First things first, what is the MC-21? Short for maximum speed, or roughly medium short-haul aircraft of the 21st century. It's Russia's answer to the world's best-selling narrow-body jets. Think Boeing's 737 MAX or Airbus's A320neo. Launched back in 2007 by the Urquhart Corporation, now part of Yakovlev under Russia's United Aircraft Corporation, the MC-21 was designed to haul 163 to 211 passengers across up to 6,000 kilometers. That's Moscow to New York nonstop. Picture this, a sleek twin-engine workhorse with a wingspan of 35.9 meters, mostly made from lightweight carbon fiber, up to 45% composites for fuel efficiency. Its cabin, wider than competitors at 3.81 meters across, with a comfy 61 centimeters aisle for that premium feel in economy. Powered originally by Pratt & Whitney PW1000G geared turbofans, it promised lower emissions and operating costs to replace Soviet-era relics like the Tu-154 and Yak-42. By 2016, the first prototype rolled out, and on May 28, 2017, it soared into the skies for its maiden flight. Orders poured in, over 175 firm commitments, including from Aeroflot, Russia's flight carrier. It was set to enter service by 2019, but as we'll see, aviation dreams rarely fly straight. The MC-21's journey, it's been a roller coaster of triumphs and turbulence. Early wins included acing 90% of static load tests in 2017, but tweaks were needed, like reinforcing the wing box after some ground tests pushed it to its limits. Flight trials ramped up, with over 120 sorties by 2019, even earning a nod from Europe's ESA for initial certification flights. Then, 2022 hit like a thunderbolt. Western sanctions over the Ukraine conflict slammed the brakes. No more Pratt and Whitney engines. No imported avionics or hydraulics. Russia pivoted hard, scrapping the Western-powered MC-21-300 variant and going all-in on domestic tech. Enter the Aviadvigatel PD-14 engine, Russia's homegrown powerhouse delivering 31,000 pounds of thrust per side. The first PD-14 equipped bird flew in December 2020, but full import substitution took years. By 2023, the plane was 98% Russian-made, new Jet OS avionics, composite wings from local resins, even auxiliary power units. But challenges piled up, the redesign added weight, about 5.75 tons heavier than planned. That slashed the range to just 3,830 kilometers, the ceiling to 23,000 feet, and payload to 20.3 tons. Critics called it overweight and late. Certification? Delayed from 2021 to late 2026. Total cost? A whopping 438 billion rubles, that's 6.6 .6 billion dollar USD. Yet, Russia didn't quit. The first fully domestic MC-21, serial number 73055, took to the skies on April 23, 2025. By August, it had logged 74 hours across 19 flights. Serial production greenlit in March 2025, with Aeroflot eyeing 90 units by year's end. Deliveries? Slated for 2026. It's resilient, but the world's watching. Can it compete globally? Fast forward to November 2025. The MC-21-310, the PD-14 powered production star, is in the home stretch. Five prototypes built, with a second one joining certification tests in August. It's hitting altitudes of 36,000 feet in Siberia trials, proving its metal in harsh conditions. Rostec, the state giant behind it, reports steady progress on 24 wing sets per year soon. Aeroflot's locked in for the first 18, and whispers of exports to allies like the UAE for a joint MC-21X variant. But gaps remain like filling the seat count void between the 163-seat MC-21 and smaller regional jets like the SJ-100. 
Enter the big news. Just days ago, Rostec CEO Sergei Kemizov dropped the bombshell at a Moscow forum. Russia's gearing up for a shortened MC-21 variant. Call it the MC-21-210, designed explicitly for longer range. Why shorten it? Less weight means more fuel efficiency and distance. By trimming the fuselage by one section, it drops to about 140 seats, perfect for thinner routes where the full 163-seater is overkill. Specs? Expect 132 passengers in two classes or up to 165 in single-class crunch mode. Range. Bumping up to 6,400 kilometers. That's a 67% leap from the current model's 3,830 kilometers, getting closer to the original 6,000 kilometers promise. Still PD, 14 engines, same 35.9 meter wings, but optimized for endurance. It's at the preliminary design stage now, with full development eyed to wrap in up to two years, targeting entry around 2028. Airfloats intrigued, though they're prioritizing the standard version for now. This isn't just a tweak, it's strategic. It plugs the gap in Russia's fleet for mid-haul routes like Moscow to Vladivostok, or even intercontinental hops to friendly nations. And with the PD-18 or engine in the works for ultra-long variants, this could spawn a family of range kings. So, what does this mean for aviation? For Russia, it's a defiance flex. Sanctions isolated them, but innovations like domestic composites and PD-14s show self-reliance. This short and long ranger could boost exports. Think BRICS partners or Africa-slash-Asia carriers dodging Western supply chains. Domestically, it modernizes Aerofloat's fleet, cutting reliance on leased Boeings and Airbuses. Economically, Serial production could hit 20 to 30 planes a year by 2030, creating thousands of jobs and injecting billions into Rostec. Globally, it challenges the duopoly. If the MC-21 proves reliable, budget airlines might bite for its lower costs. But hurdles loom. That two-year timeline? Optimistic, given past delays. Engine thrust needs a 20% boost to hit full specs. Doable? Unproven. And geopolitics. No ESA cert means sticking to non-Western markets. Still, if Russia nails this, the skies get more competitive and exciting. The MC-21's shortened, longer-range evolution isn't just an upgrade. It's Russia's bet on aviation sovereignty. Will it soar to 6,400 kilometers and beyond? Stay tuned. We'll track every flight. What do you think, game-changer or grounded dream?